Hello, my name is Andy Riddlinger, and I am the developer of Stigma, an action combat RPG game. After being exiled, challenge the tower and rise to the heavens to take back what's yours. So Stigma is a cross between Risk of Rain 2 and Final Fantasy XIV's Deep Dungeons, with a focus on Final Fantasy XIV's Deep Dungeons. You will be climbing a tower as you level up your character and fight your way through it using traditional RPG mechanics from MMOs, while also gaining tons of abilities and power-ups just like in Risk of Rain, with it going endless. The Tower of Fantasia is humanity's last bastion, but it is not without its own dangers. You play as a member of the Kreuzstein, who are the protectors of the tower, until you were banished after finding a forbidden tome, and your powers were also sealed away. Now, with nothing around you but the wastes of what remains of the outside world, you resolve to fight your way back up the tower and take back what is yours. The core pillars of Stigma are unlocking an arsenal of abilities, you'll be able to gather power and build your character as you like, interactive bosses and enemies, you will have to observe and learn the skill patterns of your enemies in order to survive, you can dedicate as much or as little time as you can, Time is something everyone's limited to. You should be able to play this game and get meaningful progression in no matter how much time you have to play and discover just how high the tower goes. Push yourself to your limits to see how long you can survive, how far up you can get, as well as encounter a variety of environments and different enemies. The combat system in Stigma is an action ability based system that's used to create a wide range of interactions between abilities and allow for many different playstyles. It is modeled after the ability systems of MMORPGs such as Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft, and Blade and Soul. Abilities range widely in use and complexity, allowing you to create simple builds or difficult builds, whatever fits your playstyle and continues to interest you. As you climb the tower and level up, you will get rewards from completing floor sets, or maybe you even purchase them. Rewards come in the form of additional abilities, upgrades to abilities and stats, as well as resources such as money and skill points. This may be in the form of a choice, or, as mentioned, a purchase from the market. One important feature of Stigma is that you are always leveling up no matter what you do. Your character will be getting stronger, whether you decide to replay previous levels or push forward into new levels. This is because when replaying earlier levels, better scores, and if you collect any rewards you missed the last time you went through them, you will keep those as you go forward. So going back and perfecting your run on earlier levels might just give you the edge to push even farther. Next, before an example of the gameplay, on to the Ranger class. The Ranger class is the first class to be introduced to the game. Its base abilities are the following and unlock as you level through the first floor set. First, you start with Focus Shot and Quick Shot unlocked. These are just simple abilities that generate sight. Sight is one of your resources that goes up to 100. Focus Shot is the stronger version, but you have to stand still while casting, whereas Quick Shot you can move but is much weaker. Next up is Concussive Blast. You use this when you have 30 sight to do 1, more damage, and 2, generate 1 gunpowder, which is your other resource you have. You can then spend gunpowder on the following two abilities, Armor Piercer, and Poison Bullet. Armor Piercer has the additional effect that it increases the damage taken of the target by 20%, and this does stack. And then there's Poison Bullet. This fires a projectile in front of you, and anything it hits, it will deal damage to, as well as apply a damage over time that does 20 damage every 3 seconds for 9 seconds. Then finally, onto our larger cooldowns, we have Lost Focus, which costs 100 Sight, has a cooldown of 60 seconds, but will buff your damage by 50% and increase your crit chance by 20%. And then Bear Skin, which is just a 80% damage taken um, decrease, 
for 15 seconds, which can prove very important to survive certain skills. And then finally, a sprint, which just doubles your movement speed for the next 10 seconds. Now on to the gameplay video where I will be covering the core mechanics and what is going on. It is sped up at parts to show just the core mechanics, so if you wish to see the whole gameplay demo, which is 15 minutes long, you can access it through the slides. You start off at level 1 with only two abilities, Focus Shot and Quick Shot, and are thrown into the first floor with a few types of enemies. Your goal is to get to the end, which is a tile marked in red. You can go as fast as you want, but earning experience is important, and to do that you must fight enemies. As you may be able to see, you play in third person with the camera locked to your heading. You target monsters simply by looking at them and can tell what is targeted by the red outline around them. The enemies themselves wander around in a small area until the player gets close enough, in which case they will chase you relentlessly. Enemies will auto-attack occasionally, dealing a small amount of damage to you when they are near you, as well as cast various area of effect spells. The orange markers represent where those area of effect spells are going to hit and should be dodged. For the UI, notice the green bar in the center of the screen on the lower portion. That is the player's health bar. To the left of that, and slightly above, is a yellow bar that, as it fills, which is your sight bar. You generate sight by casting focus shot or quick shot, which is on the player's 1 and 2 button. And then to the right of that is the gunpowder bar. This you generate by casting Concussive Blast, which is on the player's 3. Then at the bottom of the screen, in yellow, is the player's experience bar, as well as, to the right of that, the player's current level. After defeating enemies, you gain experience, indicated by the experience bar at the bottom of the screen, as well as Decon, which is the primary currency in Stigma, located at the bottom right of the screen. Upon leveling up, your character's base stats increase and you are also fully healed. You will also gain any new abilities that are unlocked at that level, as well as a skill point which can be spent later at the market to purchase abilities. And fast forward real quick to when we're advancing to the next floor. After completing a floor, you go on to the next floor. For now, there is just this test floor with a boss floor on floor 5. After 5 floors, the floor set is considered completed and you will be offered a reward before proceeding to the market. I do a bit of level grinding here until the boss, so I'm just going to skip that and go to the boss now. This big guy right here is the current boss for floor 5. All he really does is a ton of very large AoEs that hit very hard. It is worth noting though that the very first AoE he does, which covers the whole room, will instantly kill you if you do not use the ability Bear Skin, which is a 90% damage reduction. After beating the boss, the door to the next floor now opens, so you can step in there. You then get offered a choice between three different rewards, and after choosing, you are then put into the market. This right here is the market, and currently there are two merchants here, one for upgrading your stats, and one for purchasing skills with skill points. The UI is very crude right now, but you're able to purchase your skills and your stat upgrades. And then once you're done, you can turn to the exit door, go through it, and then continue to infinitely climb the tower as you, for now, repeat what you just did, but with monsters at an even higher level. In the future, 
it'll be going through additional floor sets or choosing to go back and replay previous floor sets. That is all in Stigma for now. There is a lot on the horizon, different character classes, more abilities and items, more enemy types, different floors, and of course, improved graphics. Development will be picking up quickly now as almost all the systems that facilitate the creation of these gameplay elements are done, so I hope you will look forward to the next showcase as much as I do.